Hi there, welcome to this lesson on pure mathematics. And in this lesson, we're looking at arithmetic operations with algebraic fractions. What that means is with algebraic fractions, how you add them, subtract them, multiply them, or divide them. Now, simplifying algebraic fractions, you do use exactly the same methods as you would use with normal fractions. When you're able to, you divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number or cancel by the same number. Factorizing often makes it easier to see what you're able to divide by. And we'll begin by looking at multiplying and dividing, which always involves a little bit of simplification as well. Three examples. The first one doesn't use any algebra at all. It's just to remind you of the process that you use with normal fractions. Then use the same process with questions two and three. Have a go yourself, pause the video and come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look at these together. So the first one was just a normal fractions, nine over 20 times by 25 over 21. Well, we say we want to divide the top and bottom by the same number, and it helps sometimes if we just factorize the numbers on the top and the bottom. And in this case, all of the numbers can be factorized. Nine is three times three, 25 is five fives, 20 is four fives, and 21 is three times by seven. Then these two red threes, we can cancel those from the top and the bottom. The two brown fives, we can cancel them. We're dividing the top and bottom by three, and then dividing the top and bottom by five. And that'll give us three quarters times by five sevenths. Multiplying the tops gives us 15, multiplying the bottoms gives us 28. And there's nothing we can do with that. Okay, the second question, we'll use exactly the same method. So on the top, we've got A, and then we've got B times by C. On the bottom, we've got B, and then we've got five times by A. And as long as we're multiplying, there's no problem canceling from either of the top fractions with either of the bottom ones. So we've got A on the top of this left-hand fraction, A on the bottom of the right-hand one, those can cancel, and so can these brown Bs. And leaving the ones there, that would give us that. The ones don't change anything, you don't really need to write them down. That'll just simplify to C divided by five. The third question, um, again, We'll uh, see if we can factorize. The numbers are easy enough to factorize. Slightly trickier to see is the x squared minus nine. And that factorizes into x plus three times by x minus three. That's called the difference of two squares. And then we can cancel in the same way as before. A three on the top, a three on the bottom. We can divide top and bottom by three. We can also divide the top and bottom by x plus three, canceling these x plus threes. That will leave us with that, and that tidies up to three divided by two into x minus three. Okay, dividing algebraic fractions. Now the way you divide algebraic fractions is exactly the same way as you divide normal fractions. If you are multiplying by a half, that's exactly the same thing as dividing by two. Dividing by two thirds, that's exactly the same thing as multiplying by three over two, two thirds upside down. And in general, that always works. If you have to divide by a fraction, what we actually do is multiply by the same fraction, but upside down instead. So five sevenths divided by two thirds, what we would do is five sevenths times by three over two, swapping the two and three over. In general, to divide by A over B, you multiply by B over A. Okay, two questions for you to have a go at. Try these yourself, pause the video, and then come back to me when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look at these. So first one, we said if you've got to divide by a fraction, change it straight away into a multiplication. So that'll be the same as A over X times by y over a. And then just as on the previous questions, we can cancel an a from the top and from the bottom, and that will give us just y divided by x. Second question, slightly harder, and again, as we said before, if you can factorize, then do. Now, we can't factorize anything in this first fraction, but the second one, we can certainly factorize that. 
Before we do that, we'll just change it into a multiplication. So changing the question into a multiplication means turning the second fraction upside down. Now we'll do the factorizing. 3x plus 6 factorizes into 3 into x plus 2. And once again, we've got the difference of two squares on the bottom here, x plus 3 times by x minus 3. The x plus 2s cancel with each other, the x minus 3s cancel with each other, which would give us that, which simplifies to just 3 over x plus 3. Okay, addition and subtraction. Now, addition and subtraction is trickier with normal fractions, and it is slightly trickier with algebraic fractions as well. Five questions for you to have a go at. The first one is just using normal numbers, just to remind you how things work with fractions when you're adding and subtracting. And then try and use exactly the same method for these other four questions. When I get to these last two, I'll be using a slightly different method. Uh, it's a slightly different method of finding a common denominator. But anyway, have a go yourself first. Pause the video. Come back to me when you're ready. OK, let's have a look at these. So the first one, 2 fifths plus 3 quarters. To add fractions or subtract them, the bottom numbers have to be the same on both fractions. The way you make them the same is by multiplying whatever's on the bottom together. So we do 4 times 5 to get the bottom of the fractions right. On the top, we do what looks like multiplying diagonally. So 2 times 4 to get the top left, 3 times 5 to get the top right. If we simplify this left-hand side, we would get 2 fifths. If we simplify this right-hand side, we would get 3 quarters. But we're not doing that. We'll multiply together all of those brackets. That gives us 8 plus 15 divided by 20, which simplifies to 23 over 20. And I'll just leave that as an improper fraction. Second question, now we've got algebra, but we'll use the same method. To get the denominators right, we need to multiply them together. So 3x times by the 5x. That gives us 15x squared on the bottom. And then we do a times by the 5x to get the top left, b times by the 3x to get the top right. Be careful to keep the subtraction in. It's minus in the question, so it needs to say minus there on the top. Then we'll factorize the top. There's x in both terms, so we can take the x outside the brackets and have 5a minus 3b inside the brackets. And then one of these x's can cancel. So the x from the top and one of the x's from the bottom can cancel with each other, leaving us with 5a minus 3b divided by 15x. Third question. We use the same method again to get the, the bottom numbers the same. Uh, we multiply them together. So x plus 3 times by x minus 2. That's what we will use for the denominator. And then 5 times by x minus 2 for top left. 4 times by x plus 3 for the top right. Multiplying out the brackets on the top gives us 10x minus 20 plus 4x plus 12. That simplifies to 14x minus 8 divided by x plus 3 times by x minus 2. We could factorize the top, but I think I'll just leave that as it is. Fourth question. Now we've gone back to using normal numbers again, just to illustrate what it really means when we say find a common denominator. Rather than just doing 15 times by 20, which we could do, and that would give us the right answer, there's a way for doing the question which just keeps the numbers smaller, so things get less complicated. And you look for the smallest thing that 20 goes into, that 15 also goes into. Now, 320s are 60, 415s are 60. So both numbers go into 60. 60 is the common denominator. So we'll change both of the bottom numbers to 60. 15 goes into 60 four times. That's why we do two times four on the top left here. 20 goes into 60 three times. That's why we do three times three on the top right here. Multiplying out the brackets gives us 8 plus 9, which is 17 over 60. Now, this last question is the most complicated one, but we're going to use the same idea. So we've got 3 over x minus 2 minus 2x over x squared minus 4. The first thing, as you can see I've done here, is once again split this up using the difference of two squares. This time you get x minus 2 times by x plus 2. And then we're looking for a common denominator. 
something that both of these go into. Well, x minus 2 goes into the right-hand side. It goes into x minus 2 times by x plus 2. So a common denominator here is just x minus 2 times by x plus 2. Both things go into that. So that'll be the common denominator. 3 goes into that x plus 2 times. If you're not sure what's going on here, then if you have a look at these two x plus 2s, they would cancel with each other. And that would just leave us with 3 divided by x minus 2, which is what we want for the first term. And then the second term is minus 2x divided by both of these things. And that's what we've got on the right-hand side, minus 2x divided by both of these things. That's the tricky bit. Multiplying out the brackets gives us 3x plus 6 minus 2x over x minus 2 times x plus 2. And tidying that up gives us x plus 6 divided by x minus 2 times by x plus 2. Now, that is the end of the lesson. If you have the textbook, then turn to pages 3 and 4. Have a go at exercises 1a and 1b. Thank you very much for listening, and cheerio.